The project charter is the output of the develop project charter process. The project charter is intended to be a high-level document that expresses the business need for the project from the perspective of the sponsor. The charter provides an executive-level view of the project, listing the overall objectives of the project and expectations. It's important that the project charter be broad enough so that changes made to the overall project management plan don't require changes to the charter. If the project charter must be changed, which is unusual, the sponsor must approve the changes. In this section, you'll learn about specific information that should be included in the project charter. The project charter is usually a template-based form or report. Although the structure and components of the project charters vary, there are some components that should appear in every charter. Most charters include a table of contents, version control, and detail by topic, which is a key that identifies the topics in numerical order with subtopics numbered accordingly. At the beginning of the document, include project-specific details in a table, including the project title, the date of the charter, and a brief description of the project. The project description may be in the form of a project overview statement that establishes the who, what, when, where, and whys of the project. A project overview statement enables the details of a project to be reviewed by senior management in one minute or less. The main body of the project charter should include several sections that address or include the project objectives, assumptions, constraints, and risks, success criteria, the project scope, a milestone schedule, a summary budget, roles and responsibilities, and resources. The project objective explains the value of the project that will bring to the organization and justifies the purpose of the project. You should address how the project aligns with the strategic priorities of the organization, the expected results, the project deliverables, the benefits of the completed project, and any problems the project will resolve. Assumptions, constraints, and risks are usually described in the same section, but may be handled in separate sections, depending on the nature of the project. An assumption is something that's accepted as true without proof. Assumptions in a project charter generally address project funding and core competencies. Constraints are limitations that can influence how a project is executed, such as a lack of skilled resources in your local area, or that the project depends on the successful and timely completion of associated projects. A risk is an uncertain event or condition that can have a positive or negative impact on a project. An example of a risk to a project that must meet compliance standards is that the standards are subject to change during the course of the project, which can affect the schedule and deliverables. Summarize all significant assumptions, constraints, and risks in this section of the report. You may characterize risks as low, medium, or high. If a risk assessment has been completed, include a statement to the effect that to be sure to make a copy available. Success criteria, sometimes referred to as success measurements, are conditions and resources that must be present for the project to succeed. In this section, identify the metrics and target you want to achieve as a result of the successful completion of the project. For example, you could include a series of bulleted statements such as, Scope management is the highest priority success criteria. It is imperative that the scope of the project be kept specific, small, and measurable. Ensure that the overall project is viewed as a company-owned project and not owned by individual departmental silos. The project scope section details the what of the project, establishing the boundaries of the project and defining the deliverables. Provide adequate information without being too detailed. Remember, if details of the project change, you want to avoid having to change the charter. Be sure to include a bulleted list of items and activities that are considered to be in scope for the project so stakeholders can see at a glance what is expected. Provide a second list or paragraph that describes out-of-scope items as well. Include a separate section that details the milestone schedule. This schedule should list major project milestones, the deliverables for each milestone, and the due dates. Be aware that stakeholders will keep a close eye on this section and expect the project to meet the stated due dates. For some projects, an important factor in the decision to fund the project is tied to the milestone and project completion dates. 
Of particular interest to the sponsor will be the summary budget or budget estimate. In this section, summarize the source of the funding, how the funding will be received, and a summary of the full budget or a budget estimate. Reference the full budget and include it as an attachment to the project charter. Along with the milestone schedule, this is one of the most important sections of the project charter as far as funding decisions are concerned. In a separate section, summarize the roles and responsibilities of the sponsor, project manager, significant project team members, the customer, and any subject matter experts that should participate in the project. Be sure to include their names and contact information. The last section of the project charter contains an approval statement and signatures. The statement should specify that the signatures indicate approval of the project and that the project manager is authorized to proceed with the project as outlined in the charter. Include signature blocks with date fields for the customer or client, the project sponsor, and project manager.